Hello everyone, I'm Adnan and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Desi. Uh, today I'm going to, uh, to talk about model design and the importance in, of model design in order to build a production-ready computer vision applications. So uh, that's what we're going to cover, some best practices on model design and how can we leverage new architecture search in order to, to build better models for uh, computer vision, to reach production faster, shorter development cycles, etc. So, as we all know, AI has a lot of complexities, especially when we talk about computer vision and designing state-of-the-art algorithms uh, to reach production use cases. In computer vision requires a lot of trial and error iterations over the data, over the model, in order to get the final solution that reach the accuracy and can be deployed on, on the target hardware that we want to use for the application. And usually the common barriers are unsatisfactory accuracy where we don't have enough data or the data is not clean enough and we can't get to the right accuracy, unsatisfactory performance. We use too large models. Uh, usually we start to develop with models that are too large and heavy for the production environment that we want to use. And the combination of those two brings us to long development cycles uh, that prolong and delay timelines of R&D projects. Here's how we see it happening in the market from some computer vision applications uh, that we, with company we work. So the first example is a computer vision application running in video conference applications that had a poor UX based on the high latency of the model running semantic segmentation for video conference application. Another example is uh, a company that large scale deployment of computer vision models in the cloud to serve consumer applications with millions of users that run with high latency and then we deploy the model eventually in the cloud and spend a lot of money of running those models in the cloud. And a security application that running on NVIDIA Jetson that had high latency and uh, produced uh, high cost in deployment uh, with the number of uh, Jetson devices that is needed for every deployment and every site. What we can see is that by pushing those performance level higher, inference latency in those examples, we can get better products, better applications driven by computer vision models. And today I'm going to talk about model design. How can we design models to run better in, in higher accuracy and better latency in production? But let's go back for a second and try to understand where model design came from. So we all see um, how models improved over time by looking on the ImageNet accuracy uh, over time starting from AlexNet in 2012 and how it evolved over time with the same data, nothing changed on the data, only training uh, techniques and model design principles that let us improve the accuracy significantly year over year. And this is another example for uh, object detection with Coco. And you can see that this curve is also already still improving uh, week over week as we've seen YOLO V6 and YOLO V7 recently. Uh, so, so this is still in progress of improvement of the accuracy of the models by building better models and training them better. So the idea is it's not only a, a question of data and what data you have, but also how can you design good models in order to reach high accuracy and good latency. And accuracy is not enough, as we also need to think about what is the latency. And the common practice that we, we use is to uh, draw that on, on a grid where the y axis is the accuracy and the x axis is the latency of the target device that we want. We don't measure flops or any other approximator because we, we, we know that it's not a good approximation for the performance that we're going to see in the production environment. We usually use the latency of the target device. So, um, what we can see here is an example of uh, accuracy latency trade of, of common models uh, for image classification. And the curve, the boundary, the boundary curve is something that we call the efficient frontier, uh, the optimal trade between accuracy and latency. But it's not so simple, because if we we'll, uh, measure something on one hardware and on another hardware, we can see that the performance flips. So in this example, we can see that in K80 GPU and in V100 GPU, uh, Resonant uh, 50 and Efficient and P0 as two candidate models can switch in their performance characteristics over those hardware. So the model selection problem is also hardware dependent in order to make the best accuracy. And that's the idea of optimizing the, the model design for the given hardware. 
So if we conclude all this part, what we can see is that when we choose our models, we need not to think only on accuracy, but to take a lot of consideration like the task, the data, the inference environment that we want to deploy on, what compilation and quantization level are we going to use uh, before we push it to production, and all those characteristics of accuracy, latency, throughput, model size, and memory footprint, in order to know that we're building on top of the right architecture in order to reach production. This is not the case in, in most uh, approaches of deep learning development today. Usually model, model selection is done in order to solve only one problem, which is get the highest accuracy of the data. And then, after training that model, people start to give attention for the inference performance and model size and other characteristics. This uh, brings them to back to design, redesign the model and iterate on the model in order to get better models and get them to production later on. What we uh, support is a production and web development approach where model selection has to take all the consideration of the performance early on in the development cycle in order to do, not to do that trial and error iteration and go back to design better model after we understand that we reach the accuracy but the model is large enough or not uh, insufficient latency. So now I'm going to talk about uh, this is a deep learning development platform and how it all uh, connects together to, to that approach. Uh, Automac is the automatic uh, neural architecture construction algorithm uh, developed by DESI, which is a mass driven neural architecture search driven algorithm that automatically design neural structures. So the three inputs in general is the task or the candidate model, uh, the data, uh, and the inference hardware. And Automac generates an architecture uh, to train for the given data to reach the best accuracy latency trade off uh, and all those considerations to get a model, the best model to go to production uh, for that use case. So if in this example we can see all those open source uh, models, how they perform on Intel Cascade Lake CPU, uh, and we can see a clear trade off between accuracy and latency where we go higher, uh, we see a lot of uh, higher latency but also higher accuracy. So this is the efficiency frontier as we know it. Uh, and what we can see is that all the Efficient frontier, the outliers models on that frontier are generated by neural architecture search. For example, Efficient Net, uh, developed by Google with neural architecture search, Mobile v 3 pregnant by Facebook. So today, automatic model design is everywhere uh, in the open source models that we're using. Our technology can generate uh, models that are superior than those in the trade off between accuracy and latency by simply designing models that are optimized for the Intel Cascade Lake CPU with a neural architecture search approach that I showed you in, in the previous slide. This is an example for models that generated for various operational points on the trade off between accuracy and latency uh, for uh, multiple points on that desktop. So, if we take, for example, the efficient light B4 that is here and we want to replace that model or to do something with similar characteristics. Uh, but with higher performance, we can replace it with Decimet 6, which is more than 2x faster than that, or any model on the top left quadrant, starting from efficient net uh, light B4. So all of those will be some, somewhere on the trade off between being with the same accuracy with better performance, or being with better accuracy and also better performance. And this is a choice that uh, we can input to the algorithm what is the latency or what is the accuracy that we want to produce and that will produce that. And the curve here at the bottom shows that it's not only for ImageNet and not only for Cascade Lake CPU, we have curves for object detection, classification, NLP use cases, um, and others. And at the end of the day, it reflects on reducing the cloud cost, improving the latency and the user experience for those that are using those applications, and being able to run the, the models at the end in real-time performance. Let's dive a little bit deeper on how the algorithm works. So um, we have some notation here. We talk about a given data set, a given baseline model, for example, REST50 in this example, and access to a target hardware edge with all the inference environment of that uh, hardware. The automatic objective is to generate an architecture that we call it A star, while being optimized uh, for some optimization criteria that I will show in a second. 
And being aware of all the data, hardware, and other characteristics that I showed earlier with the production environment. And this is the optimization objective. A, a star is the outmax throughput of uh, the of the new alarm architecture over the data for a given hardware, subject to getting an accuracy that is higher for some level of accuracy. Now let's let's understand this equation. It means that we want to optimize the throughput, or we can optimize the latency or power consumption or, or anything that we can measure, uh, subject to some level of accuracy. This brings us the case that we showed earlier. Each point here is a, an optimization objective that we use uh, based on the latest formula uh, that I showed. Um, so if we set that objective, understanding the latency is quite easy. We only need to be able to measure it, so we can optimize every measurable uh, measurement metric. Uh, and then the question is the accuracy. If we have a search space of candidate that I didn't talk about, but that calligraphic A is the search space of all the candidate architectures we select from. It consists of hundreds of thousands of neural architectures and even more. And how can we select the best architecture A, A star, uh, from that search space um, without training all of them on the data set and understanding what is the accuracy? And that is the most complex question that we solved in NESI. Uh, well, all I can say from now about that is it's AI models that predict given neural architecture and the data, how do we work together while training them uh, the data on the neural architecture. And by the, be, having that predictive capability, what we can do is we analyze the entire search space of the hundred thousands of architectures in seconds or minutes and select the best neural architecture out of that space under constraints of uh, accuracy, latency, throughput, etc. But the model itself is not living in, 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 in vacuum. Uh, the model is running on some hardware, and between the model and the hardware, there's the inference stack, as we call it. Uh, so at the bottom, we see the inference hardware. We can run on GPU, CPU, or specialized ASIC, or anything like that. And between the model, which is on the top, and what we have below, we have two layers. One of them is the graph compilation layer, where uh, solutions like TensorLT, OpenVinner, CoreML and TBM uh, manipulate the graphs in order to, to get better performance uh, or better utilize the hardware given the graph of the neural network, better utilize the memory access, etc. Uh, and other model compression techniques like quantization and pruning, which is the higher layer, and the algorithmic layer. So we need to uh, optimize, and this is kind of a puzzle, but everything has to work together in order to optimize the neural network to a given hardware to work well. Uh, and this is an example that we, we submitted to ML Perth. ML Perth now called ML Common. It's a benchmark for algorithms and, and deep learning power. Uh, so, this is a, an example of throughput on uh, Intel uh, cascade layer CPUs, where the baseline is uh, having 14 images per second. Intel submission uh, on their hardware together with OpenView, which is a graph compiler, uh, and 8 bit quantization getting 50 images per second per core. And Autonac, uh, where com combined with OpenVIN on 8 bit quantization, get 5 weeks better than that to 256 images per second per core. And those results are public on the ML Perf or ML Common uh, website. So, what we can see here that working on those two layers is not enough. Like quantization and graph compilation can give you some level of boost, but if you want the, the, the highest performance, you need to reading the neural architectures that you're using and run neural architecture optimization like the one you see offers. So if we conclude with the, um, if we conclude with the uh, enablement that, that can be done using the, that kind of technology of automatic design of models, uh, it can enable inference on edge devices, it can improve the user experience with better performance of models either by better accuracy or better latency, it can reduce the inference cost from running on the cloud or need to uh, buy a dedicated hardware to run inference on the edge or edge server and simplify the development and shortening the try and error iteration in the model development where we take all the characteristics of the model design and model performance at the beginning. Thank you. Any questions? In the remaining two minutes? Yes. Are you modeling docs or Specifically for like 2D vectors or 1D vectors? So today we're working on um, 
2D and 3D volumes, uh, so image classification, object detection, semantic segmentation, depth estimation, feature points detection, all the computer vision tasks, all the 3D volume tasks like 3D semantic segmentation and those. Uh, and we work on NLP, all the transformers models uh, for sequence classification, generative uh, of text, etc. So, so those are the use cases. We are less, less uh, working on the uh, tabular data or the structured data, but mainly on the unstructured side of the world. Uh, 